Music means a lot to us. By just putting a record on, it helps us process emotions, escape reality, or just get really pumped up about something. But how did that music get on a piece of vinyl in the first place, and how does it make music to our ears? Hey audiophiles, Julia here for DNews. I know it seems like a simple thing, but how do we record sounds onto vinyl? How does this vibration produced in our throats get carried through the air and captured on a disc? Well, it wasn't easy. For centuries, there were attempts to transcribe sound onto paper. Back in the mid-19th century, scientists were studying how sound waves move through the air and vibrate. Inspired by studies of the inner ear, French scientist Edouard Leon Scott de Martinville tried to recreate the eardrum with a thin membrane. Attaching this membrane to a stylus or etching pen, he could trace the vibrations that hit that membrane onto a piece of paper or glass. But it took at least 20 years for anyone to realize that, hey, these 2D lines on a piece of paper, if turned into 3D grooves in something, might be able to be played back. The earliest attempts at recording the human voice go back to the 1870s, and like most inventions of that era, was developed at Thomas Edison's labs. Once we had sound waves figured out, there had to be a way to mark them down somehow and replay them later. Edison's labs came up with a cylinder covered in tin foil with a needle attached to a thin membrane called a diaphragm. As sound waves hit the diaphragm, they jiggled the needle, which etched the vibrations and movements into the cylinder. But he wasn't the only one working on it. Emil Berliner developed a similar system, but his had a hand crank that turned not a cylinder, but a flat disc, cutting three-dimensional grooves of sound waves directly into it. The needle or stylus would read the grooves, producing a sound that was amplified by a horn or a cone, and thus the gramophone was invented in 1887. And that's still kind of how analog sound is played today. Records work on a similar principle, only instead of recording it fresh each time, it's recorded to a master disc and then pressed into vinyl. Today's record players have the stylus, usually made from diamond or sapphire, attached to a tone arm. That's the thing you pick up and move to put on a record. Tone arms can be straight or curved, and there's some debate as to which is better. And the sound isn't amplified mechanically. Instead, it's carried through the tone arm to a cartridge containing coils in a magnetic field. These coils take the vibrations and amplify them electronically through speakers. But on a warmer note, many record fans say they sound just that. They believe records sound better and warmer than other forms of recording because of its fidelity. But that's an arguable case. But maybe the rise of record players lately is simply because many vinyl files say they have an emotional connection to records. Some say it's a nostalgia factor. Others like that records are so tangible, they're something that you can really see and feel. Maybe it's the appeal of the ritual, the taking off the jacket, placing the record on the table, and finally getting the stylus literally in the groove. So while some might get a little down on digital recording, it can be awesome. I mean, modern scientists have even found a way to listen to those Scott de Martinville recordings using a virtual stylus. Seriously, it's really creepy. Give it a listen. There's a link down in the description below. All right, audiophiles, it's your turn. Do you still listen to old vinyl records? Do you think it's better than digital? Debate down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to DNews. We've got new episodes every day of the week.